Welcome to Bridgewater United Digital Ministries Online and a special welcome today to our friends in Lunenburg County who join us in worship. I'm standing here in beautiful Blue Rocks, Nova Scotia. As we come together to worship our living God, let's connect, unite our spirits in light and in love and begin with the singing of our Be United Chorus and the lighting of our candles. The scripture reading today is from Mark chapter 4, verse 35 to 41. That day when evening came, he said to his disciples, Let us go over to the other side, leaving the crowd behind. They took him along, just as he was in the boat. There was also other boats with him. A ferocious squall came up, and the waves broke over the boat, so that it was nearly swamped. Jesus was in the stern, sleeping on a cushion. The disciples woke him and said to him, Teacher, don't you care if we drown? He got up, rebuked the wind, and said to the waves, Quiet, be still. Then the wind died down, and it was completely calm. He said to his disciples, Why are you so afraid? Do you still have no faith? They were terrified and asked each other, Who is this? Even the wind and the waves obey him. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Ever been at a family dinner? Maybe just in conversation over coffee with a group of friends? When... Before long, you find that you're getting a little animated and worked up. That the topic of conversation might have shifted to religion or politics or, or something that has now triggered you and you're, you're fully engaged. You can feel your heart rate racing and, and you're becoming more passionate, maybe even argumentative. And you're caught up in your argument and, and even though you can see that it's happening, you feel like you can't escape it. Maybe if you're with your spouse or a loved one, they give you a little kick under the table, or they squeeze your hand, trying to get you to calm down. Or a friend at the table may try to shift the conversation, to lower the temperature of the conversation and shift things away from what has engaged you, triggered and wound you up. Or maybe you have the experience of having a friend. And we have these even, sometimes these members in our church who, for whatever reason, seem to create a lot of drama and chaos in their lives. There's always something going on and they're, they're frantic in their energy. They're animated and there's always a, a problem and they, they try to hook you in. And in fact, if you, if you don't collude with them, they'll sometimes say that you don't care that you're not their friend, that, that if you were, if you truly cared for them, you'd be as passionate and as upset as, as they are. Seems to me that life itself is a lot like the weather. That there are days when things are bright and sunny and on those days we often feel blessed. We feel that maybe God is with us and that there is there's a synchronicity to our life and to our spirit. 
Of course, there's other moments in our lives where life is very turbulent and stormy. Other times where maybe it's just calm and okay. And of course, we all have our moments of fogginess. And whether it is with relationships, with our church community, with our health, with our finances, our loving relationships, all of these things that we care for and about seem to have this ebb and flow like the weather. But it seems to me it's, it's in the storms of life that most often we begin to doubt. We begin to doubt that others care for us. We begin to doubt that God is with us. And we often can feel alone and even scared that nobody cares, that somehow we're failing and maybe even perishing. I think that's how the disciples might have felt in our story today. As Jesus invites the disciples to go with them in a boat and to cross the waters, and he's asleep in, in the bow of the boat, when all of a sudden a great squall comes up and there's a storm, we're told, and, and of course you can imagine the disciples were frightened, they were scared. They're out on the sea and there's turbulent seas all around them and, and they're afraid that they're going to perish. And they wake Jesus up. And this conversation ensues where they say to Jesus, do you not even care that we're about to perish? Now the disciples, I think, had every right to blame Jesus. It was his idea to go and, and go across the water on the boat. And we know he stands and he, he calms the storm. He calms the sea and he questions their trust. He questions their faith in him. Let's resist the temptation in this story to figure out how Jesus calms nature. And look, I think, a little bit more deeply to the fact that what Jesus was calming was the chaotic, turbulent forces that were surrounding the disciples. Same forces that all of us seem to experience in the rhythm of our own lives. And like the disciples, we too often feel in those turbulent times that we're uncared for. And yet it's precisely in these moments, and we hear this in the story, that God cares for us more. That God is concerned for us if we reach out and we trust that God is there for us. That even in the midst of learning of a difficult cancer diagnosis, that in the midst of legal proceedings in a divorce, in the midst of feeling great anxiety over our relationships with our children or the stress of our finances, or not knowing when we will see loved ones through this pandemic again, that when we seek God in the midst of this, that God will call us into moments and places of stillness and moments of calmness. You know, we all can weather storms when we're dressed for them. In fact, when it's snowing a blizzard outside, if you can bundle up and get dressed appropriately, it's, it's an enjoyable walk. Or if we are able to find sanctuary in our home or in, in some place and watch the storm from a distance, we have a, a great sense of calm even in the midst of it. And this story assures us and tells us that in the, the midst of all of the storms of our own lives that, that God is there to call us into those moments of stillness, those places of calmness, even as the storm and the squalls make up all around us. There's another question that this scripture raises for me today and it's, it's who are we for others in the midst of their storms. In other words, how do we care for each other when we're not going through the, the, the best moments in our lives, when things aren't just great and sunny and, and going well, but, but how are we showing up to each other when we're dealing with great tragedy and difficulty? How do we show up for each other when we're trying to understand the direction our church is going or our own lives? Do we come at it, in other words, from a place of fear, a place of scarcity, a place where there's a sense that, that God is absent like the disciples in this boat? 
or do we approach each other from a place of compassion and love? Do we approach each other as being that stillness and that calm for each other in the midst of whatever may be going on in each other's lives? I know you've seen this and witnessed it before, but, but there's something very powerful that, that occurs in human relationship when we are distraught and upset or when we are grieving and struggling, when a friend shows up and they're that steady, calm, loving, non-judgmental, non-anxious presence for us. We feel great love and great care. Just as I imagine the disciples did when Jesus rebuked those chaotic forces and he called them into a profound understanding of what it means to deeply trust in God's presence and God's spirit. We're called to do the same. And certainly we all experience these types of moments, these storms in our own lives, and we do in the church as well, for there's great uncertainty. But we have a choice to either be that that tornado in the midst of relationships, to be that person creating drama in the midst of community, or we have the choice to be that calming presence, seeking God's direction, trusting that God's Spirit will lead us through this as we find love and compassion for each other in the middle of it. I encourage you today to be that calm for others, to trust that even in our worst moments, God loves us, God cares for us, and God is with us. May that be the truth for each of you and for all of us. May it be so. Amen. As a community of faith and a community of faithfulness, let us join our hearts together in prayer. Spirit God, be our breath, be our song. The song of love you offer to us through the blessings of creation surrounding us is a symphony of joy and delight. Your ever-present goodness enlivens our hearts to be filled with joy and delight. Within every moment from sunrise to sunset and through the nighttime hours with starry night skies, you fill our lives with beauty and our hearts with continuous inspiration to offer you our praise and our prayers. We are thankful for the joy of being one component of your creative goodness in the world. And we endeavor to be generous in our response and care for all that you have offered to us. May every word we share be an affirmation. May every deed we perform be enveloped in gratitude. May every action we convey be wrapped in love. Every breath we inhale and every breath we exhale, may it be filled with praise. For you, gifted creator and ever-present love, are deserving of our constant devotion. With our hearts united in prayer, with those surrounding us in our sacred place of worship, and with those worshiping with us through the blessings and gifts of technology within our virtual world, we acknowledge we are not alone. We are part of a large, wide, diverse community of faith. Even when we are distanced and separated from others, May we continue to feel the strong connection with others and celebrate how your spirit unites us together, how your spirit enables us to be strong, and how we can offer strength and hope 
and encouragement to others through the unity of our hearts and our prayers and by spirit. Together we are stronger. And so we celebrate community. We are mindful that each of us walk our own paths in life. We all have our own unique experiences each day that shape who we are and how we respond to the world around us. From our faithful and individual life experiences, we carry in our hearts a myriad of expressions of gratitude and thanks and a diverse collection of cares and concerns. Cares and concerns for our own selves, for our circles of family, friends, and community, for people and places across our province, across this beautiful country of Canada, and around the whole of your amazing creation. While we inhale your creative goodness, and exhale the prayers we hold in our hearts and minds, we embrace silence and offer the prayers of our gifted lives. Receive the prayers we have offered God we entrust them into your tender, caring heart with trust and assurance that all will be wrapped within your loving embrace with grace, hope, wisdom, care, and protection. We are your people. We are those who are called and inspired to be the spirit-filled followers of Jesus in the world today who carry your message of love in all that we do. For all that we've offered this day, through the words spoken and those offered from the silence of our hearts, we pray as Jesus inspired us to pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. It'd be hard not to be grateful when we stand in such a beautiful part of God's creation on a beautiful sunny day when things are fairly calm. Yet we know that each of us and those in our wider world often experience storms in life, moments where they need to know that they are cared for, that they are loved, and that they matter. And that's a huge part of our focus in our ministry. And so I wanna invite you today to consider a couple of things. One is to consider continuing or starting to financially support these online services and this ministry that, that we share with you. We really feel it's important and we know that many of you find these services meaningful and nurturing for your spiritual life. And we do need your support to see that they continue. But I'd also invite you to consider how you can use your gifts to serve our wider community. Specifically here at Bridgewater United Church, we are in need of people who may be interested in learning photography and videography, who might want to become part of this online service in some way. And I'm confident that if you are willing to serve, that we have a role for you. We have mentors willing to teach you. You'll be able to be part of this wonderful digital ministry team. So to each of you, for all that you do and for all of the ways that you care and love one another in our world, thank you.
thank you for choosing to spend your worship time with us here at Bridgewater United Online. We really do appreciate it. And if I could ask a favor, please consider sharing our YouTube link on Facebook and with friends and family. But more importantly, may each of you indeed know the wonderful blessing that you are and that others are to you. May it be so. Amen.